Hello everybody, welcome to the first two weeks in April. I know I'm a few days behind. If you ever wanna catch me on it, definitely go over to my website because the blog and the astrology forecast is always out on April 1st and 15th. So I don't fall behind with them. But this video is all about the astrology for April 1st through the 15th of 2024. And it's an especially intense time. Um, it's an especially important video, therefore. There's a lot to cover, and we're going to go through the different aspects that are making this such a chaotic and energy-packed time. And I'm also going to dive into specifically the eclipse, but I think we're going to talk about it in a way that I don't hear a lot of people talking about it. So sit on back. I will call out different zodiac signs and exactly like, you know, time spans of when, who, who might be affected or impacted the most by specific aspects that I describe. I'm sorry if I have my computer. I don't mean to have my computer <laughs> in between us. So let's jump in. What do we have? We have Mars conjunct Saturn. We have Venus conjunct Neptune. We have April 7th, which I want to bring your attention to because it's the day right before the solar eclipse that everybody's talking about. Um, but there's something about the moon that we kind of need to talk about then. And then we have Venus transiting into Aries, which happens in just a couple of days. We also have Mercury retrograde, which is already happening. It's happening between the 1st and the 25th of April. Um, and then we have the solar eclipse on the 8th, which I know, I know there's, there's been a big, you know, hullabaloo about it. Um, so everybody's talking about that one. But the, the, let me say this. The reason why that solar eclipse is so powerful is because of everything that is happening alongside it, like right with it and conjunct to it. And so we really do need to talk about all of that to understand why the energy is so profound. And then we also have the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. Technically, if you're an astrologer, you usually consider a conjunction within five degrees. One planet is within five degrees of the other. And some astrologers even count it within 10 degrees. But either way, both groups of astrologers would already be happy because the truth is uh, Jupiter and Uranus are already within, I think, like four or five degrees of each other. So the conjunction is already happening. Um, the perfect conjunction will be a little bit later on, but it's still building up. It's the energy is still there. And, and to not talk about it would be ridiculous. So we're going to go through that one by one. Um, we're going to go through all of those things. And then I'm going to double back around. And, and while I'm going over those things, I'm going to let you know um, what zodiac signs are going to be impacted by it and how most profoundly and how. So let's go all the way back to what's going on right now. We have Mars conjuncting Saturn. Why is that important? It's a tough energy. Both uh, Mars and Saturn are malefics. And what that means is they're stubborn old ratty pieces of you know what, like they have difficult energy to deal with. They generate difficult energy to deal with. And when the two come together, it is it is really draining. Um, it's really restrictive. It requires so it's it's discipline meets action, which can be wonderful. But when the two of them come together, it's like a negative plus a negative equals a positive could be great. Conjunctions are neither good nor bad. They don't have a difficult connotation. They don't have a um, a typically um, positive connotation, but ultimately it's just how you use the energy. Well, it is Mars and Saturn together in Aries, and this is going to last between April 2nd and April 18th. So it's on. It's on for a while because it's an exacting energy. It's almost perfectionism. Um, and along with Mercury retrograde going on along the same time, this could set us up for a lot of disappointment because we'll be so hard on ourselves or other people will be so hard on us without considering that sometimes things are out of our hands. <clears throat> and if so, it can feel like very limiting. <coughs> 
how draconian this energy is. Draconian, if you don't know what that means, it's fine. Means that it's so strict, it almost doesn't make sense because humanity doesn't work that way. Can also be very draining on the energy because you feel like you're this revving engine sitting on cinder blocks. You can't go anywhere. <clears throat> so lots of frustration. This will be especially impactful since it's happening in Pisces 2. And Pisces 2 is pretty much mid-Pisces, anywhere from, say, the 28th or 29th of February all the way through, say, March 10th or March 9th. It's, it's, it's around there. So if your birthday falls in there, March, I say March 1st to the 10th, you're going to be extra hard on yourself now because that's conjuncting your natal sun. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you can't do anything, feeling like something is just sitting on you and really frustrated. It could generate a lot of anger because Mars is in the mix. Then we have Gemini and Sagittarius too. So if your birthday is, is between those respective period, time periods, um, in your respective months. So for Gemini, it would be sort of around June, the beginning of June, like June, June 1st, June 1st or May 30th to the 10th of June. And Sagittarius 2s, it would be kind of like that time, same time span in December, say December 1st through the 11th or November 30th through the uh, December of the 10th. Um, you're going to be extra hard on yourselves as well and on others. <clears throat> oh, I don't know, but with you, because it's squaring your energy, it's squaring your natal sun, no doubt butt heads with exacting people or situations now that refuse any progress. So there will be a lot of butting heads and frustration that's happening now. And then, of course, for Virgo twos, because it's in direct opposition to your natal suns, this would be uh, people with birthdays, say, September 1st through the 10th around there. You're going to be bombarded with both terribly being terribly difficult on yourselves and having to deal with controlling energies around you. So there can be a lot of conflict now between you and authority figures or father figures, especially. Very combative energy in your face. And it's almost like that combativeness is what's causing there to be no progress, right? Because nobody wants to yield to the other's knowledge. So not easy energy. April 2nd through the 18th. Um, but this energy could, however, help individuals born Cancer and Scorpio too, um, since it is going to be trying to your natal signs. It also could make you take those conflicts a little bit too easily, like do, do nothing about them. And that's actually good. No resistance is better with this energy because it would just cause more conflict or feed into the conflict. And Capricorn too and Taurus too, this energy is actually sextile to your natal suns so somehow some way this could help to inspire you or motivate you or give you new ideas and help you take initiative don't know how but it, it could it could build up that energy so it is a tough energy and remember like i said this is already like april 3rd when i'm when i'm uploading this so in five days, we're going to have that eclipse. So this, this conjunction is still going to be happening. So that's why there's, there's so much going on here. I don't know where to look with this camera and it's bugging me. Do I look here? Do I look here? <laughs> um, and that's why there's just so much. Um, this is just one of many things that are happening in Aries and the solar eclipse is in Aries. So think about that energy, that kind of tightwad, draconian, repressive angry energy and then we also have venus conjunct neptune which is a very opposite energy but it's happening it uh, venus is already transiting into aries so it's happening at the end of aries so pisces three it's the air it's the pisces aries cusp so especially if your birthdays are from um march even 18th through um, March, um, 30th, no, I would say more 28th, oh, why do I put this, hold on, we have April 1st through the 7th, cool, well, that's Pisces 3, not April, 
that's wrong. Pisces three would be, anyway, yeah, so let's just do that. It's, it's really the Pisces Aries cusps that are going to be affected by it. So that would be, say, anywhere from like March 18th through March 25th, especially. That's, that's the Pisces Aries cusp. It's a tough energy. And I'll tell you why. Because it's so lackadaisical and fantastical that it's like, all I can say is the gilded cage is the hardest to escape. And that gilded cage is the cage of your own fantasy. Venus conjunct Neptune is very creative. It's so exceptional for creativity. You can just let it flow out of you, but focus and not getting distracted and, and, and really interacting very well with, pe with people. No, because it hazes you over. It makes you think better of people than they you could. And you could be easily bamboozled at this time, especially with Mercury retrograde. You know people are calling you coming back into the situation and then you also have venus conjuncting uh neptune and it's going to happen i'm sorry i didn't write this wrong april 1st through the 7th so right it's leading right up to the eclipse it's like what do you need to understand now that people will tell you what you want to hear to bamboozle you and it'll be so easy for them to do especially mercury retrograde so think i want you to just be honest with yourselves and take a second and think, who have I recently heard from that I haven't heard from in a long time? Who's calling me now? Or who am I calling that I haven't seen fit to keep in touch with for a while, but they need something? You guys, this isn't going to work out. I'm telling you this right now. They're either idealizing you because they're seeing you in a different light. And they, once again, are not recognizing who they're really talking to. Or you're doing the same to them. So this is a tougher energy than it looks like. Because it is so romantic and dream dreamsical and whimsical and lost in its own fantasy. Overindulging is very likely as well, especially with alcohol. Overindulging taking ourselves into escapism, even like a lot of television or social media, I would stay away from it. But once again, it can also be very creative energy. And it, it is a time to be inspired and be introspective. And whatever helps you with that introspection, whether it's painting or designing or writing, whatever that is, that's really good. It's very musical energy. Venus conjunct Neptune. It's very poetic. It's very graceful energy. So that's lovely for you to work on those things. But how you see other people and how it how it like how it like portrays other people to you, very deceptive, very self-deceptive. It's tougher than it looks. It's because it's so fantastical and dreamy. So this energy will always be especially distracting for Pisces 3s and Aries 1s. This is the cuspers, right? These are the cuspers. Like the dates, what did I give you? I said March 18th through the 25th, something around there. If your birthday's around there, this is going to be conjunct your natal sun and re re you'll be really distracted now. Even with your creativity, your employer might not be that happy with you right now because it's like you have a very distracted mind. Your natal suns have already been conjunct Neptune for an extended period of time. That's kind of energy that you're used to dealing with right now because it's been happening for so long. But to have Venus there, an inner planet that's delivering it even closer and more powerful and into your every day, very distractible. You'll be so lost in romance right now, you won't be capable of reality. Use it for creative inspiration, though. And wow, you could have major breakthroughs after Mercury retrograde is over. Cancer 3s and Scorpio 3s. You will get too comfortable too quickly with someone you feel you've known forever, even though you really don't know them at all. FYI, I would not recommend you meeting people now, but you're going to. And you're going to wake up a couple months later and not know who they are. And then we have Virgo 3s. Watch out. You will be extra vulnerable to being scammed because remember, it's it's right opposite your natal sun's. Um, Virgo three, it's the, the cusp, Virgo three, uh, three Libra, Libra ones. So it's that cusp, September 18th through October, through, uh, September 25th. It's like, it's like, watch out. You will be extra vulnerable to being scammed. This is opposite your natal suns. You're already weakened by that perpetual Neptune opposite your natal suns, right? 
but the fact that Venus is there, believe me, I'll tell you, let that clear out after April 7th before you start thinking this person's in love with me or this person really cares about me. Seriously. You won't be able to think straight during this transit. Uh, Virgo 3s, three, three you will be very uh, vulnerable to being scammed and taken advantage of during this because you'll see things as not what they are, but as you fantasize them to be. And it's really easy to feed into your fantasies right now. And even though Virgo 3s, you usually have a very clear mind, it's fogging it, especially where your Venus aspects are concerned, your sensuality. If people are triggering your sensual natures or they're, they're, pleasing your sensory input it looks beautiful it smells beautiful it tastes good you could be very manipulated by that now uh gemini and sag threes you won't be able to think straight during this transit distraction will cause frustration for you it's square to your natal suns that's say may 18th through may 25th and then uh december 18th through december 25th this is like those cuspers Capricorn and Taurus threes as well. This could be a time of divine inspiration for you because your natal suns are going to be sextile to this energy. So Capricorn Aquarius cusps and Taurus Aries cusps, your natal suns are going to be um, sextile to this energy. And what does that mean? That means you're going to get the best of it which means creative inspiration, divine inspiration. You are on point, more graceful, more elegant, more connected to not needing tight boundaries, but feeling more comfortable with just creating and going with the flow. This is going to be helpful for you guys because it's a sextile. Let's talk about April 7th. Need to talk about that with you guys. Why? The last day of... Um, The last day of of the um, the Venus Neptune conjunction is April seventh. But what happens on April seventh? The moon passes by. Could be April April sixth too. Um, the moon passes by that that Venus Neptune conjunction. And, okay, <laughs> the moon, Venus, and Neptune are the easiest to distract. They are the easiest to get lost in their own brain. They are also the most creative energy and the most psychic energy, especially with the moon and Neptune. Um, pay attention to your dreams because psychic energy is off point right now. Off point right now. However, in waking life, deception will be very high. And considering Mercury is also in retrogrades, our brain is just bombarded with fantasy. It is not a good day for business dealings or signing anything. I'm serious. In Mercury retrograde, you shouldn't sign anything serious anyway. But this day, especially, do not sign anything. You could be easily bamboozled or suckered in and not be paying attention where you really need to be paying attention. It will be especially easy to deceive on this day. And for those of you who I just mentioned, sextile, uh, Capricorn, Taurus, uh, Capricorn, um, Aquarius cusps, Taurus, Aries cusps, you guys would be the ones taking advantage of everybody else on that day to, you know, get ahead of it, right? And, and in some ways, it's still helping you. Not a good day for business. Not a good day for integrity. <laughs> not, not a good day. And with the moon and Neptune, I think we're communicating a lot better through our psychic connections and capabilities and capacities. So written word or signing anything or legal agreements isn't a good idea anyway. But it will also be a day where there's extra pressure an extra emotion, very emotional day. Um, and then we have Venus transiting into Aries on April 5th. So for the first couple of days of the Venus-Neptune conjunction, they're in Pisces. That's so romantic. But then when Venus goes into Aries, 
it's still conjunct to Neptune. She's still conjunct to Neptune. It's in detriment in Aries. So now she's even more vulnerable to use her wiles in a way that sucks, to be totally honest with you. Um, when a planet is in its detriment, it means it's at its weakest. It's most, most vulnerable, which is where it can be the most productive because it has to work outside of its comfort zone. So you can pick up the most, you can learn the most. Those, those of us who are ruled by Venus. So what do I mean ruled by Venus? I mean, find your ascendant. And if your ascendant sign is Libra or Taurus, your chart, your mentality is actually ruled by Venus. It's not ruled by where your sun sign is. So for those of us with a ruling sign of Venus, with our charts ruled by Venus, we are we are ruled by sensuality and romantic inclinations and we're ruled by money. Money is important to us. Value systems are very important to us, right? Also being diplomatic and fair and and sensual and making the world like wanting to get the most out of the pleasure out of the world we are very very driven by our pleasure centers so when venus goes into detriment we can feel extra vulnerable because we're out of sorts with ourselves venus in detriment um she is she becomes most volatile here too because she can be very defensive and trying to overcompensate so it's easier to make rash decisions with money, rush into romance head first, because everything in Aries is head first, and being far more forceful than usual or than you should be. Uh, most relationship that start, relationships that start now will fizzle out because it's more just about I want it and I want to see if I can get it than it is about the actual qualifying the real truth of the person. And especially with her conjunct to Neptune, you're not even going to see that. You're going to be fighting for and reacting to a fucking fantasy. Just letting you know. Um, Venus in Aries is anything but subtle. Uh, this transit will be felt most by cuspers, uh, which we just discussed. And remember, as the transit happens, she will also be conjunct to Neptune. This is She's not at her best now. She is at a very creative point in herself, right? But if you can use, channel that energy into, use that energy to, to create something, like, like, like be inspired, take it out on a canvas or on a piece of paper or anything like that is great. But I, I, I would, for, do not, do not make financial deals now, stupid Done. Don't do it. Don't sign contracts now. Don't do it. Just please, please stay far, far away. For those birthdays um, on the Pisces Aries cusp, it may soften out your nature a bit. Enjoy the sweetness of it a little bit. As long as you appreciate yourself when you're a bit more romantic and mushy, then it could be very pleasant. Either way, the romantic sensibilities turn up for you right now. Gemini, Cancer cusps, and Libra, Scorpio cusps, it will be all too easy for you to lose yourself in a dreamy relationships or attraction right now. And that doesn't just mean people you want to fuck. It means people that you want to work for, people that you want to be friends with. You're not seeing them for who they really are right now. You're just too comfortable with people. It's too comfortable. I would watch out. Because you're not making the best decisions, especially with Mercury in retrograde. And then we have the Taurus Gemini cusp and the Capricorn Aquarius cusp. This is nice energy. Um, this energy will make you uh, romance masters and turn your love juices to irresistible. Still, watch for overindulgences. And then we have the Virgo Libra cusp. This energy will distract you so much that you will help someone take advantage of you. Especially when that moon on April 7th. Watch out. Um, I would advise against new relationships at this time. As for existing ones, you could easily misinterpret things right now as your brain won't be at its sharpest while the transit is happening. It's not the whole time while Venus is in, in uh, Aries, but while the transit is happening. So uh, right now, especially the first week, April 1st to the 7th, while she's still conjunct Neptune. This is what I'm talking about. Um, 
Um, you could misinterpret things right now easily as your brain won't be at its sharpest, but try not to make any promises until after this conjunction is over. The same thing goes for all financial transactions. It's bad enough with Mercury in retrograde, which means your ruling dignitary Virgos is in retrograde and the Virgo threes, Libra cuspers, you've got this Venus moon on the seventh Neptune conjunction. I mean, please, please just don't around this time just don't do not make any large purchases or sign financial agreements right now cannot stress that enough bad time for it mercury retrograde it's already in retrograde and no doubt no doubt you have already felt the wrath of its shadow period which is about like a week before and i tell you shadow periods are worse the period before the retrograde and right after the retrograde are just worse. They're like the, think of the dog's mouth, the teeth, and then the tail at the end that wags and smacks you. And then it's just a dog in between. It's a little dogged, which means it slows things down. But it's really that period before and that period after that you kind of want to watch out for because it's the least expected and could hurt you the most. So April 1st to the 25th, here we go. Now everything, Mercury is officially in retrograde. Here we are again, and it's so normal for this time of year. It is. Mercury goes into retrograde about three times every year. This isn't like, oh, catastrophe, right? It's not. Only, let's read on. Um, this Mercury retrograde is also conjunct major energies. The North Node, Chiron, and the Solar Eclipse is all happening conjunct Mercury in retrograde. So that makes it not just a normal Mercury retrograde, okay? It's almost as if the universe is out for vengeance. Being that this retrograde is happening while Mercury is in Aries, watching our mouths or attempting, tempering our opinions will be very difficult. Um, ever been in an argument with an Aries? It's not pretty. It's a massacre. Mercury in Aries is not known for its diplomacy. It's blunt overly sure of itself and doesn't think before it speaks the retrograde will only ensure more chaos we may rush to conclusions without being able to think things through one thing is for sure this retrograde will not allow pleasantries people's true colors yours included will show um since it's all about it's all about ego it's all about the self. This is Aries energy. This is all happening in Aries energy. This Mercury retrograde is happening in Aries energy. Like how have you fucked yourself with the promises that you made or how, how you've spoken out of turn? They won't have much ability to hold on to what's in their mouths. This could prove helpful for those of you who have been excessively prudish. Could, could help you actually. Could help generate some actually you getting at you out of your shell. Um, it will snap you out of that, though, in the most awkward way possible. Because Aries isn't subtle. It's aggressive. Those contracts made during this retrograde will not last long, but they could have lasting impact. Can we underline that like a thousand times? They could have lasting impact. So please force yourself to breathe and try to think before you do anything rash. Especially impacted will be all of us. But especially Aries 3s, ouch. This is conjunct your natal suns. Watch out for impulsive decision making. Force yourself to think longer about things and get second opinions. You're going to want to react and react quickly. And that's going to fuck you. Let you know that right now. Uh, Libra 3 is super ouch. This retrograde is happening opposite your natal sun. This will cause confusion and disappointment because of mixed messages and shoddy information. A second opinion will be necessary through the 25th of April, really through the beginning of May. Don't sign anything legal. Try to reschedule that test. Not the best time to find jobs or accept them. You get the point. It's a time to review the information you already have. Be bold with your retrospection. Okay? Where it could help us on the eclipse is that it could dull our ego just enough to get us to see and remember our truth again. That could be the blessing here of this humility, this humble pie. 
that we're about to eat. Sagittarius and Leo threes, it will be a bit easier for you guys because you're going to be trying to this energy, but not by much. Cancer and Capricorn threes, what a son of a bitch this retrograde is going to be for you. It will be most difficult to not put your foot in your mouth every day. And Aquarius threes and Gemini threes, this chaos could bring helpful insights to the surface for a clearer understanding and opportunity. This is the sextile, you lucky sextile people. It will improve an opportunity to say what you needed to say and not give a damn about the consequences. It could be a very liberating time for you. Think closure. Closure. Um, these are the threes. The threes are usually, say, the 11th through the 21st. Of, of, of any given month that's it's usually where the, the, that time span ranges or that that decan covers um the solar eclipse on april 8th this is what i want to read to you and i'm gonna i'm gonna pull out this video so that i'm gonna like make it special for those of you who just want to watch about the solar eclipse this is it this is talking about the astrology for the solar eclipse on april 8th here, let me let me read this quote to you that I had off of um, off of Instagram. <laughs> it was so cool. Avoid the temptation to make choices that are familiar but no longer serve you. Was that really a good choice or just a comfortable one? Is that really who you are? Or, you, or who you are limiting yourself to be. Think about it. The sun in Aries, so the first house, which is the house of self, on knowing who you are, thinking of who you are, being all about who you are, and the sun, which is our heart space and also represents the ego and the father and the, the life force energy, is about to be darkened by the moon. Understand this, my friends. The moon doesn't actually stop any of the sun's radiation <laughs> or the energy that it feeds to the earth that actually nurtures things on earth. The moon is only blocking the light, the visual impact. And so who you visually appear to be, the ego that you have built is about to be dimmed and humbled. And in that moment, maybe we can rediscover the truth of who we are instead of what we have foolishly deceived ourselves to believe we are. And in that clarity, God help us to find our true path again. Because this eclipse will have permanent impact and the choices that you make now will determine you're going to fuck up for the next few years or are you going to break through? And it's only through humility um, that you're going to be able to actually break through. So many of us, and I'll attach the video above. So many of us are celebrating this eclipse in the wrong way. We're making big spectacles out of it. It's, it's the opposite. You're supposed to stay inside. You're supposed to allow the light to go out. You're supposed to go inside, introspective, and understand and allow the darkness to reveal the truths that you have easily ignored because of all the shadows and light dancing on the wall. Okay, this is a time for you to cleanse and reflect, especially during Mercury retrograde. The last thing for you to do would be to take big actions and do extraordinary things around this eclipse. Let it humble you. Let it humiliate you. Let it bring you down to the darkness where you are going to rediscover your soul. The soul's light never goes out. And we find ourselves in the dark. That's what I want to say about this eclipse. Let's get more into the astrology, okay? It is conjunct Mercury retrograde, I think, within five degrees of it. Because it's at 19. The eclipse happens at 19 degrees Aries. Um, it's conjunct Mercury retrograde. It's conjunct the North Node 
and it's conjunct Chiron. And that is why I am mentioning to you humility, learning through making mistakes and bowing down to those mistakes as teachers, that's Chiron, as opposed to being defensive and letting your ego like fight against him, lean in to say, what the fuck is this trying to teach me? The North Node is all about moving forward, but we got to move forward humbly. We got to move forward on our knees. Think of that. Think of that scene from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. How do you, uh, how do you, what, how do you behave in the presence of God humbly? You kneel, you kneel, you kneel so your head doesn't get chopped off. Remember at the end of the last crusade where he had to go through all that, those three, those three booby traps? Kneel. That's how my head doesn't get chopped off, by, but somebody else's did. Kneel. Be humble. This is, this is, this is what we need right now. Chiron in Aries is very heroic energy. The, I'm not going to let that ever happen to anybody else. Like I am becoming the hero. No, you're becoming the joke. Chiron is trying to teach the self how to be truer to its nature as opposed to its ego. So the past will burn up. It's a vengeance. This isn't just an eclipse. It's a vengeance, but it's personal. Um, the past will burn up in the ether on this one. Anything that has been lingering, holding on by a thread, it's going to be over. And hopefully what's going on inside of us, we can just shed that skin um, finding the courage and the voice to speak out against injuries, suffering, anything that you've been tolerating for too long and has been dragging you down. This is when it ends and something new begins. Um, it's like a total reset with Mercury retrograde involved. This could be literal, especially in those areas of totality, the totality, the total eclipse. Um, I posted this on my Instagram as well. You'll see what areas in the United States on other, well, it's no, it's just for the United States, what the areas of the United States where it's covered. I know it's like, it goes, it goes across. It start like starts from Texas and goes across. So it's hitting the Northeast as well and different parts of the Midwest. So it's, it's, it's hitting a lot of different people in that point of totality. Um, so An, elect, an, an electronic reset that won't take prisoners. So it could have to do with electronics too. We'll get into also why, because guess what? Jupiter and Uranus are conjunct at the same time. And there's definitely innovations coming through. This is a hard restart confronting major handicaps. Yes, it could be physical, but also mental that have impeded our, pro our process and progress. Mental blocks won't be permitted anymore. So a forced restart, to be clear. Many, many cruel statements and criticisms will come up again to remind you of what you are not and where you do not belong. Go forward. Move past it at last. This is the new you, but also the real you in full effect. And now let's talk about the ongoing Jupiter and Uranus conjunction. That's ongoing, dude. Guys, that's going to be, oh, that's for a couple more months. And it's, it's, it's already going on. It's growing closer and stronger every single day. And Jupiter is catching up to Taurus, uh, to Uranus and Taurus, using what we have in new and innovative ways right now until Jupiter finally overtakes Uranus later this month. And then suddenly we'll be curious about what else we can do with it all. This is a time of extraordinary techno technological breakthroughs that will force us to explore the vastness of our own minds and the boundaries of our ethics. Because Taurus has to do with ethics too, remember. How are we trying to twist them? How are we trying to, to take them in a new way and try to pretend like, like they can be bent and, and not broken? We may get a, get a hard backlash here. What we push too far now will destroy the way we are and force us to be different, to live differently moving forward. There are breakthrough changes to the norm that will happen during this time for all of us or that will eventually affect all of us. This is less personal and more profoundly global. However, 
Taurus, late twos and early threes. Oh my God, you are shifting conscientiousness right now. If you aren't aware of it yet, believe me, everyone you know is. Surprise disruptions to your norm are giving you very little choice but to search and explore beyond your current boundaries. Scorpio, late Scorpio twos, early Scorpio threes, this is going to feel forced. So you could have some control issues batting heads with that. You will be hyper stimulated to shift your awareness in a way that makes you uncomfortable, but unable to look away. Change is inevitable. Aquarius, Leo, late twos, early threes. You'll feel a great deal of inner, inner toil and find yourself fielding curveballs a lot. You need to shift and you eventually will do it. It just won't be a comfortable shift. You may find yourself in disagreement with many of these surprising changes or changes within your own mindset could create a lot of friction within your current situations. Capricorn, Virgo, late twos, early threes. You probably already understand that need for change and you are probably open to it. And then Cancer, Pisces, late twos, early threes. This is a highly motivated time for you and opportunities will come from surprising places. So there you have it. April 1st through the 14th in a nutshell. Definitely go to my website and sign up for my blog post. You will get it in the mail every 1st and 15th. So you'll have it fresh off the press before I even have time to make this video. Um, and then I will always come back here, guys, and make this video for you. So I hope that this has illuminated you and inspired you somehow or made you realize a little bit deeper why you can never separate yourself from the universe because it is in you and you're connected to it. I love you so much. Feel free to leave comments below, especially about the way you've been experiencing these energies. Unlike most of my videos, I will leave the chapters on because it will help you navigate. Um, but I honestly think if you want to know the astrology and you want to know, especially right now for these two weeks, if you want to know why everything is so intense, you have to hear all of it because it's all of it happening at once that is making it so intense and making this period such a crunch time. I'll talk to you soon, guys.